Hey, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Oedipus Complex. Oedipus Complex. Okay. So, uh, I guess um, I'll explain it by steps, even though it doesn't really have steps. Uh, the first, I guess, premise that we have is that the baby, baby, loves its mother. Okay, and um, you know the Oedipus complex sort of relies on on the uh, assumption that the baby has a mother and father figure around, which is why it doesn't apply to everyone in the world. But uh, you know Sigmund Freud, <laughs> again I'll write his name in the corner, uh, seemed to think that it would, and that that's one of the criticisms is that it doesn't apply to everyone. And okay, so the next thing that happens is that the mother already loves the father. You know, they fell in love, or, or I mean, in theory, in, in the normative situation, already loves the father. That's not saying she doesn't love the baby, but I, I mean, you know, they already have a full and complete relationship, in, in theory. And so then, then that leads to number three, you might see where the trouble comes along here. If if the mother is already preoccupied with the father, and then now the baby comes along and wants all the mother's attention, then then the father is sort of getting in the way of the baby's attention. So uh, the baby becomes resentful. Be no reason for a capital B. Becomes resentful of father resentful of father. Okay, so, you know, it, it's just simply, rather than breastfeeding me, you're busy talking to dad, and I don't like that. Uh, I, I don't know, that that's, that, this is the real crux of the issue, I guess, number three, is, is that he's jealous. So, what does that lead to, number four? using the same colors over, is, uh, well, I don't want to say he wants his father dead, but I, it, that is the, 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 the really cold way that, that Freud kind of phrased it, is, is I, baby wants father dead, or removed, at least. Uh, I'll just put gone. Baby wants father gone. He wants the mom all to himself, and and you know I keep saying he the baby, because uh, the Oedipus complex only applies to male babies, and and for females, it's the Electra complex, which uh, the the Electra complex wasn't made up by Freud. If I if I take an aside here, uh, this is by Young Carl Young. And Carl Jung was an apprentice of Freud, but then he went off and did his own thing, including the Electra complex. And and Freud doesn't like the or didn't like the Electra complex. He uh, not really a fan of what Carl Jung went on to do. And and Carl Jung broke off because he disagreed with Freud. So there, there's a little bit of drama on the side in addition to all of this Oedipus drama happening over here. So. The baby wants father gone. Okay, he wants the father gone because he's jealous of the mother spending all the time with him. And so, what's the next step? Um, I'll, I'll use purple for step five. Okay, so the baby wants the father to go away so he can have the mother all to itself. And and baby loves mother. We're kind of coming back to this. Is um, Freud? Freud thinks that this love isn't um, isn't all too different from the sexual love, and and according to the Oedipus complex theory, the baby or the son. I guess I'll start using son now. It's not really. I, I mean, this is uh, I think three to five years old. I I can write that three to five years. 
And this is all happening pretty quickly. It's not like by this time they're five years old. It, it's it's all kind of one thing. I'm just I'm listing to make it a little more clear because it, it's kind of convoluted to go through. So the son wants to marry the mother. To marry mother. Or um or maybe to have sex with the mother, or to at least have her full attention in, in whatever capacity this turns out to be. And so, I, I don't know, the theory is, according to Freud, that every boy goes through this, but of course we, we see a lot of flaws with this. Um, if I go down, the flaws include, you know, it, it assumes, it assumes two parents uh, of different sexes. It assumes mom and dad, I guess, which isn't always the case. You know, may, you know it, maybe the whole village is raising the child, or, or maybe they, they're only living with their mother, or two dads, grandma, whatever. There's all different um, uh, configurations of families, and it only applies to this one. Um, let's see, what's another one? Well, it doesn't apply to, to girls or women, it does not work well, or does not work for women, for females, I say. So that's another criticism, which was, you know, uh, Jung tried to sort of fix that with the Electra complex, like I said, but um, it, I, I don't think that's very successful. I. Well, I've still got time to fill, so I think I'll tell you the story of Oedipus briefly. Um, the I'll just I'll just sit up here and and tell it to you. Um, Oedipus was born to the king of queen of Thebes, and it was prophesized that this new baby would end up killing his father, killing his father, and marrying his mother. That was the prophecy that the the uh, fortune teller gave. And so the father wanted to prevent this, and I, I don't know why the mother <laughs> agreed. I, I guess she agreed with him. But the, the agreement they came with was to uh, essentially throw the baby away. They had a servant move it to the mountain. Servant just... Well, the, the servant was told to just lay the baby on a mountain mountain. And the servant was, I guess, more scrupulous than the baby's own parents, and, and he decided not to do that. He gave it to a farmer. So, he gave the baby over to a farmer. And the farmer raised him, and um, th he was named after his swollen ankles. They had, <laughs> they had his ankles tied up so that he wouldn't be able to walk later. Because they were just such sunny individuals, and so uh, a Oedipus is similar to the, uh, I think, Greek word for swelling. So he was named after his swollen ankles, and and he was raised in by a farmer out in the woods or or out, out in the mountain. And when he got of age to to go out on his own, he he heard about this prophecy, and well, well, he got the prophecy said separately to him. I think is how it went. Uh, he got his own prophecy that said basically the same thing, that he would uh, kill his father and marry his mother. And so, so he was thinking of the farmer and the farmer's wife, and so he didn't want to go back. He didn't want to fulfill this prophecy the same way that his dad didn't want to fulfill his dad's prophecy. So he he refused to go home. Pro is that how you spell prophecy? Prophecy. It's a but anyway, so he didn't want to go back to the farmer's house. So instead, he ended up going to Thebes. And guess what happened there? He got in a, a car accident or a chariot accident with a with somebody, and they ended up fighting over it, and he ended up killing the guy. And then by the end of the story, we find out that it was his father in the chariot, so the, both of the prophecies came true, and he did end up marrying his mother. And, um, well... I guess to tie it all together, Freud um, heard this story or saw the play or whatever after his own father died, and and that was sort of the 
spark that got him thinking about all this, and, and he eventually came up with this little theory, and, and it's still it's still sort of being talked about in, in popular culture once in a while. You hear Oedipus Complex, and that's what they're talking about. <laughs>